Not gonna lie, did not think 2021 would bring us hero of liberty Nicki Minaj, but sure enough, she may be one of the most important people in the country right now, maybe even the world. Nicki Minaj has around 180 million followers between Twitter and Instagram. She was recently suspended on Twitter because she was speaking out against vaccine mandates. Nothing that she said, as far as I can tell, crossed the line into suspension territory. But here we are. Now, this all started when Nikki tweeted about her cousin's friend whose balls got swollen from getting the vaccine. I'm not uh, my understanding is that's not a side effect of, of the vaccine, but it's fine. If Nicki Minaj had an experience and was sharing it, welcome to the world of the Internet. What we ended up getting was this press cycle making fun of her, lying about her, claiming that she, th- this was the main reason she won't get vaccinated. In, in one instance, I believe it on, on CNN, late night shows were, were smearing her. And it was all just an exaggeration. Now she has gone out on Instagram to her 160 million followers saying, essentially, that the U.S. is becoming like communist China. (laughs) Bravo, Nicki Minaj. And, you know, I I, I looked into a bit about Nicki and the things she's done in the past. And I got to say, this is on par with who Nicki Minaj is. There's a story from a while back where she canceled a show in Saudi Arabia because she thought that they were abusive, that they, they violated human rights and stuff like that. I think it's legit. And not only that, so we have this uh, we have this video clip. It's been recycled a million times, and here we go recycling it again. It's from Nicki Minaj's Instagram Live. On it, she says that she remembers being in China and being told you cannot speak out again. Yeah, because when they criticized China, they were like, yo, you can't do this. And here's the crazy thing. It seems like Nicki and, and other people involved in her business and in her periphery were like, okay, I guess. But now she's here in America saying, yo, it's happening here. You can't even ask a question about what's going on. They come after you. They lie about you. She's right. And uh, I am grateful to Nicki Minaj for for waking people up, for being honest, for coming out and saying, you're not going to shut me up. Now, let me tell you where this gets really, really crazy. Nicki Minaj tweeted out that she was invited to the White House. And a lot of people were like, "Ah, oh, well, there you go. So much for the bastion of free speech and, and, and freedom of choice. They're going to bring her to the White House. They're going to give her the spiel. She's going to come out. And she's going to say exactly what celebrities say. A lot of people thought that the invitation to the White House would be the end of freedom loving Nicki Minaj. But they're wrong. You see, what happened was Nicki said, I'm not going. Why? Well, this goes back to the beginning of the story with Nicki. She said, Someone tweeted at her, y'all haven't done a live uh, appearance in a year. And she goes, I got a baby. I'm not traveling. Simple, right? Makes sense. She doesn't want to travel. She's got a kid. She's got the luxury and the, and, and the, the choice to be there for her kid. I respect that. So then when it came to the Met Gala and everyone's like, you know, she's not at the Met Gala. She said they want people to be vaccinated. If I get vaccinated, it's not going to be for the Met Gala. Some people pointed out saying that you know, she's refusing to get vaccinated for the Met Gala. Even TimCast.com ran that headline. I talked to our editors and our team and I was like, I don't like that headline, you guys, you know, because it makes it seem like she skipped the Met Gala because she didn't get vaccinated. And the argument, the discussion was basically like, she said, I would not get vaccinated for the Met Gala. And that's what we're trying to highlight. And I'm like, Okay, whatever. Still, I'm not happy with that, but it is what it is. I'm not, I I don't try to be, uh, uh, like, I understand the point. Like, she did say, I would not get vaccinated for the Met Gala. But the important context, which was included in the article, was her saying, the reason I didn't go had nothing to do with the vaccine. It was because I didn't want to travel because of my baby. And I'm like, all right, I get it. I don't want, I don't want to be put in a position where I'm like, I'm going to defend Nicki Minaj having said she wouldn't get vaccinated for the Met Gala simply because I agree with her stance on liberty. And I like the fact that she's challenging mandates. So, OK, I didn't want it to be biased. And that's the best I could probably muster up. But you take a look at what's going on now with the White House invitation. Let me let me, let me pull up the story and I'm going to say it again. Nicki Minaj. Amazing. Not really listened to a lot of her music, probably heard it in passing or whatever. Don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm very much libertarian, little L libertarian, not like the party or anything like that. And if Nicki Minaj wants to make music, if she wants to do her thing, by all means, like I'm all about freedom and people living and let live. And if people like her music and stuff, and you got to see, this is a person who's coming out 
and standing up on those same principles, defending them to 180 million people. That's a good thing. That being said, if Nicki Minaj puts out, you know, I don't know, garbage music or something nasty, I criticize it. I don't really pay attention all that much to what Nicki Minaj is doing. So I'm not saying that to be like um, to disrespect her in any way. I'm like, I don't know. I don't follow her stuff. Check this out, though. The White House comes out and says we never invited her. Now, this is crazy. So Nicki Minaj goes on Instagram. She goes on her live show and she's like, the White House is now claiming, you know, they called my people and said, come to the White House. And I said, can we do something over the phone or virtual? Because I don't want to travel because of my baby. And they said, sure, okay, we could do that. Then when she tweeted out, they invited me to the White House and she was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to wear all pink. Apparently, the White House comes out and then says, we never invited her. We just wanted to call her on the phone. Man, that's crazy. It's crazy the amount of lies. But you know what? Let it be their downfall. Nicki Minaj, she's, she's not nobody. She's somebody. And, you, and she may not be the biggest political figure. She's not, you know, her story might not be on par with like Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, betraying this country. Not committing treason, that's a bit more technical, but warning China about our military plans, that's crazy. But this is American culture. And if more people like Nicki Minaj stand up and speak up, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be over, over overnight. In her Instagram Live, this is, this is amazing stuff, Nicki says that 80% of these, these black celebrities, musicians you follow, completely agree with her on all of this stuff, but are scared to speak out. You want to talk about big balls. You know who's got it? Figuratively, Nicki Minaj. She doesn't care. And I respect that. Check this out. Nicki Minaj hits back at Biden White House after it claims vaccine related phone call not visit was offered. Earlier this week, Minaj faced a backlash after she wrote a tweet asserting that a friend of her cousins became impotent from the vaccine. She said, she's, this is what she said. Do y'all think I would go on the internet and lie about being invited to the effing White House? Like what? Do you guys see what is happening right now? Minaj said in a 14 minute video post on Instagram, she claimed her manager and publicist were on a call with the White House in which administration officials said, we'd like to offer Nikki an invitation to come to the White House to speak with Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy and Dr. Fauci. She said she told the White House officials she would rather not travel and suggested some kind of either public or private live video on social media. She went on to say it probably have to be public because it would not be it would be disingenuous if I told all my fans. Like, oh, I had a private conversation and now I'm going to I'm, I'm going to sell you on this vaccine. She wanted people to be able to hear that conversation. All of a sudden. Nope. And I think that's it. You see, here's what happens. I'm willing to bet in private they were going to say toe the line or else. But you can't say that publicly now, can you? So when Nicki Minaj is like, I'm questioning this. I want I want people to pray on it, make the right choice for themselves and then all of a sudden, the dam breaks and the media lies, lies, lies. And she starts saying, yo, they're lying about me. You can see exactly what the game is. I'm willing to bet the White House said, come on down to the White House. They want to get her in private. and They want to say, stop saying this stuff. But she says, I can't do it. I got a baby. Why don't we do a live stream publicly that everyone can watch? And all of a sudden, we never, no, we didn't. We never invited her out. Maybe they'll do their, 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 their public live session. I don't know. But it wouldn't be as effective as getting some, one of these celebrities in private. The White House was open to doing a live session, she said, but never took a trip to 1600 Pennsylvania off the table. Earlier Wednesday, a White House official suggested the administration offered only a phone call with the rapper to speak with experts on vaccine safety. Yo, who do you believe? The Biden White House or uh, Nicki Minaj? I believe Nicki. I literally do not believe she would just go on and, and lie about this. I don't. She could be wrong, I suppose. But let's go through some of this stuff because you got to see the lies and you got to see how insane this, this stuff is. And I'll also give a shout out to Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer went on Tucker Carlson the other night talking about how he's not going to stand for uh, venues mandating vaccines on people. And so he canceled these shows. He said he had fans calling, you know, hitting him up, being like, yo, I really want to come to your show. But they're saying I have to get vaccinated. And he was like, I won't do it then. I'll do a show somewhere else. I respect that, you know, and, and we talked about this last night with Jack Murphy quite a bit. I think the vaccines are safe. Um, I, I think there are, there are adverse reactions. Those are listed on the CDC and the FDA website. I'm sure, uh, you know, there, there, are, there is always risks with any medication. I mean, even, even you know, taking too much ibuprofen can screw up your stomach and stuff like that. 
But I don't think it's an issue of, of politicians mandating it. I think it's an issue of you coming to your doctor and talking about your life and your, your issues. And when we do these blanket mandates, we end up discriminating against people. And I'm not okay with that. I do not think that a society seeking to be a, a, a great American melting pot and this multicultural, beautiful place. And I mean that in the sense that people come here and bring their, 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 their beliefs and their food, but still adhere to the U.S. Constitution and our laws. I don't believe that we can then be like, oh, but also we're homogenizing your medical care. There was this big thing that happened where apparently, uh, so for, for Jewish people on uh, Shabbat, Sabbath, they aren't allowed to operate machinery or push buttons or anything like that. And there was this thing that went out where I can't remember where it was. It was a letter saying, yeah, well, we know you've got religious practices, but you must violate them now for proper COVID reporting. And they had to issue an apology. I'm like, dude, I'm not okay with that. If a religious group says from sundown on Friday to, you know, a sundown on Saturday, we do not engage in certain practices. That is a religious belief intrinsic to them. And, you know, what's interesting about that is like the people who would def deny someone's right to religious practices, they really don't have any philosophical understanding, like any, 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 uh, the like they, they don't get it. They just do not understand. They, these, these are, it is, it is the utmost arrogance to do that. And that's why, well, uh, let, let, let me read some of these tweets and get back on track with Nicki Minaj, because I want to give a mad shout out. One of the most important tweets we've seen. Nicki Minaj tweeted out Tucker Carlson with the little bullseye emoji. And, and Hassan the Sun said, you know, he's a white nationalist, right? Tucker Carlson's not a white nationalist. Sorry. Nikki says, right, I can't speak to, agree with, even look at someone from a particular political party. People aren't human anymore. If you're black and a Democrat tells you to shove marbles up your ass, you simply have to. If another party tells you to look out for that bus, stand there and get hit. Woo! <laughs> I'm a big Nicki Minaj. I'm going I'm to I'm put on her music after this. Now, I don't know if I would like her music, but I can certainly respect uh, um, her standing up for herself and saying no. To be fair, I will, I will mention, you know, when you got FU money, it's a lot easier to do. Hassan responded with, Tucker Carlson is not only vaccinated, but doesn't like black and brown immigrants coming into the country. This isn't about parties. There are plenty of racist Democrats, too. Hassan is, um, I think he's a hard worker. I think, you know, he's very, very prominent. But I also think he's an authoritarian. And I also think he's a moral authority. He's, 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 a, he's a political and moral authoritarian, as we had put it. Like cheering for rule by executive decree. Sorry, I'm, I'm not for that. I have a problem. You know, it, the president can't just declare war. OK, Congress has to do it. Yet what have we seen over the past several presidential administrations? They just do it. They just make up a raise and go do it. Yeah, I'm not OK with that. I'm not OK with Joe Biden trying to bypass uh, uh, the legislative branch. We talked about this yesterday, too, in, in great detail. But, you know, it, it bears repeating. We are not a, we're not a republic anymore. You think I'm joking? We are not a republic anymore. I don't know what kind of government we have, but let me explain with this vax mandate stuff that, you know, Nikki's speaking out against. Here's the way the country's supposed to work. I live in an area. There's about 700,000 people in this district. It's massive. I mean, it used to be 35,000, but sure. That's what, when the country started, the district was like 35,000 people. I, we, we get, someone from the area says, I would like to represent all of you to the federal government. We hear their ideas. I say, this guy, you know, he, he gets me better than, that, than this person. I'll vote for this person. We send them to the federal government. While they're there in D.C., they will draft a bill saying, I don't think people should be allowed to juggle bananas, you know, near a volcano. Submit. It goes to a committee that uh, in Congress where they specifically handle these things. Then th they vote on it. Then if it passes, it goes to a floor vote. If it passes, then it goes to the Senate. If it passes, it goes to the president. The president can sign off on it. And boom, no more juggling bananas near volcanoes or whatever the law is. You know, I'm just being silly. Now, the president can veto. It can fail in the Senate, get pushed back and get revised. It is rather difficult to get legislation through in, in, in many instances. Right now, we're, we're kind of stuck because the country's divided. And this is the way it's supposed to be. When the House is split, but still a Democrat majority, they can send it up. When the Senate is split and you get like Joe Manchin or um, Kirsten Sinema, and they're like, I don't like this. It's too left or whatever. Then it holds things up and those bills don't get jammed through. The president can then veto. Get it out of there. Here's where we are now. The way our country works today, it is not a republic. It is an executor. 
It is a sovereign who decrees something must be done. And the people are allowed only if negatively impacted to petition the court to remove this law from the books. The court can deny you. That's how it works. So Joe Biden says, I hereby decree if your company has at least 100 people, you must mandate vaccines or weekly testing. Well, that sounds an awful lot like legislation, but he just did it. And now you have to abide by it. Otherwise, they will take action against you. And if your company or you as an individual are negatively impacted, you can then file a lawsuit if you can afford it. And if you can afford it, it'll go to a federal court who may strike it down. And then you appeal. And it may then go to a superior court who strikes it down. And maybe if you're lucky, the Supreme Court will decide to hear your case. And the Supreme Court may say, nay, we reject your claim. By, and there you have it, rule by decree. That's how everything has been, been done in this country over the past two years, basically. Amy Tarka uh, Tarkanian says, pardon some of the coarse language in this, but Nicki Minaj went on Instagram live last night to her 157 million, 157 million followers and gave a powerful speech about how America's cancel culture is turning us into a country like China. I love seeing people waking up and standing out. Bravo, Nicki, man. No, no joke. No joke. I'm, we are lucky to have people like Nicki Minaj. And you might criticize her. I've seen people say things like she's a degenerate and all that stuff. And I'm like, yo, there are a lot of like uh, moral traditionalists who don't like what she represents in terms of her culture. Ain't me. Uh, I, I, I got no problem with people, you know, doing their thing. I do think there are issues with behavioral sync and bad influences on kids and all that stuff. But I think that comes down to the parents. If you're a parent, you don't want your people watching or listening to Nicki Minaj. Well, you're the parent. Do something about it. Don't complain to the government and have the government take away what other people like. So I'm stoked. Somebody tweeted at Nikki. She, they deleted their tweet, but she said this. Concerned about people becoming brain dead. Y'all have become so scary to witness. Questioning people becoming, quote, mad at people who are asking questions about something they are putting inside their effing body. Do you not hear how effing dumb that sounds? I see why it was so easy for Jim Jones. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I would, I would like to... Uh, 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 buy Miss Minaj a beer for that one. Amazing. Jim Jones was a guy who made everybody drink the Kool-Aid, remember? And they just said, whatever. Now, to be fair, no one suspects the Kool-Aid's poisoned. But if you got to go to a doctor and they're going to give you something in your body to change your body, that is your decision. My body, my choice. Hey, guess what? I'm pro-choice as well. Mostly for this reason. I abhor abortion in, in almost every circumstance. I see countries like Iceland, you know, they, they just basically want to eliminate people with Down syndrome. I think people with Down syndrome are valuable human beings. And uh, I don't like it. But I just cannot have a bureaucrat or an activist or a politician get in between me and my doctor. I just, I just can't do it. And I understand people say things like, you know, there's two, there's two people involved in the equation with that stuff. And I'm like, I hear you. I do. I just, I, I... Hard moral questions, man. Get away from me. I know my body. You don't. I've got issues I got to deal with. And I'll say this. People who, who abuse the system and use abortion as contraception, I think is wrong. I think it's absolutely wrong. But I just don't like the idea of someone having to go to a panel or submit a form or have a government actor. I'm just like, nah, that is, I just not there for it. However you deal with that, I'm not going to pretend to be a, a, a moral, uh, 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 the arbiter of morality. I just don't know. In this regard, though, I will say this. The same roadblocks I have for saying government should intervene in, in medical stuff is the exact same stuff I have with, uh, with vaccine mandates. Here's where it gets funny. On CNN, they said that Nicki Minaj cited swollen testicles as a reason why she wouldn't get vaccinated. She never did. She said, I never cited that as a reason I didn't get vaccinated. This lie is so funny, entertaining, though. I'd say something mean to this lady, but I really like Colbert. Super balls. Now I'll tell you what well, I'll throw back to uh, Nicki Minaj. She supports these people. You got to call them out. You've got you, 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 you got to call them out and say, you know, they're, they're, they're lying. And she's been doing that. But you see what happens is when people see this segment from, from Stephen Colbert, they're going to believe it's true. See, what happens is 
Colbert will fall back on. It was a joke. You're not supposed to take it seriously. But the basis of the joke is presumed to be true. And then there's the joke. So in this instance, they come out and say, she said swollen balls as why she won't get vaccinated. And they show CNN saying it, which people assume is a real serious clip and true. And they're laughing. And then they play this fake music video of Nicki Minaj saying, you know, giant oranges or whatever in your pants. And people are going to be like, yeah, it was true. It's not true. It was not true. She didn't say that. So here we go. Late night takes lots of jabs at Nicki Minaj. The rapper's tweets about her cousin's friend who she said had swollen balls after taking the vaccine instead of a flood of commentary. Sure. We got this one now. Tori Cooper is an anchor reporter. So she, uh, I don't know where she works. She says, Nicki Minaj told the truth to me. Fauci lied to me. Protesters are approaching cars, leaving the CDC gov in Atlanta, claiming the CDC is lying about the vaccine and Nicki Minaj is telling the truth. More on COVID-19 misinformation and locals protesting this vaccine at CBS 46. So, OK, she's a CBS reporter. These protesters are come, coming out and saying Fauci lied. And I'll tell you something. Th- these are these are black people doing this. The idea that it's a far right white supremacist thing. You see what Hassan tries saying? Well, Tucker Carlson's a white supremacist. What does that have to do with anything? And she called him out saying, y'all trying to change the conversation to be about racism when it's about whether or not you should be forced to put something in your body. There's also a video, apparently, right wing and uh, Black Lives Matter, along with some right wing groups like Trump supporters were marching against the vaccine mandates. That's unity, man. So I'll take it. Let me give one, one another shout out to, to Nicki Minaj. She in, in July 9th, 2019, it was reported that she canceled the performance in Saudi Arabia. And it was because they don't have uh, her support for the rights of women, the LGBTQ community and freedom of expression. Yo, legit. Straight up, legit. Nicki Minaj said, I'm not going to perform in this country that's abusive and violates people's rights. And I'm like, here, here. Now she's out here saying, I still believe people should be challenging this stuff and speaking up. We're lucky to have a celebrity like Nicki Minaj, because how many celebrities just say whatever they're told? Too many of them. And it's sad to hear when she says 80% of these people believe the same thing she does. They're, they're just scared. I'll tell you this. A lot of celebrities follow me. A lot of famous people hit me up all the time. And you know what? It really, really, I'll say this. It offends me when uh, I don't, I'm not trying to be mean, but yo, I'm going to say it. When you guys message me and you're like, Tim, you're spot on, man. And we got, you know, and then I'm like, when, when are you putting out your PSA? Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Bro, you've got more followers than me. How are you going to come to me, some, some dude talking into a camera on the internet, when you've got this massive platform with hundreds of millions of fans, and you can't come out and say, I will not comply? Is the money more important? This is what I don't get. I don't understand how you can have fame and money and sit there and be like, but I want more. I don't want to lose it. That, that is crazy to me. This is what I said the other day. You know, I was talking to Jack Murphy. He was talking about the, the, the predicament of his son wanting to play baseball. And, you know, his son, they're saying he's got to get vaccinated and he doesn't know what to do. And, and the issue is that the vaccine isn't, um, it, it, he thinks, you know, it's, it's going to be, his, his son will be fine. He's not concerned about his son's health after getting the vaccine. He's concerned about the executive mandates and the force and the coercion. My, my argument was, take your son out of baseball. He's 14. You're the parent. And, you know, his thing was, I don't want to take that away from my kid, and, and, and it's tough. And the, the challenge we face is that there's a lot of people who are, they're stuck in that position where it's like, do you just give in to this one thing, this one thing? You know, we were talking about this, and my position is basically, there are celebrities out there who have more money than they, they, they can possibly do anything with. You know, when you, when, when, when you get to a certain level of having money, there, my, I have one friend who told me that he went through an existential crisis because you don't have to work anymore. Once you get to that point, you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. And now it really becomes about willpower. Don't gorge yourself and gain 500 pounds and maintain the passion. A lot of people, he said, sink in, like in the tech industry, he was in, he was in San Francisco. He was like, a lot of people become depressed because now they don't work anymore and they sit around bored and confused and eating bad food. And you got to have that, that willpower to keep that passion going. So when I see these celebrities and they're, they're unwilling to challenge the system, I just don't get it. So anyway, but the point about Jack was my position was this, you know, people said, Tim, 
you you claim to stand up on principles, but you won't get off YouTube because, you know, while they censor people. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to use this platform on, on social media to promote TimCast.com and tell people to come to my platform. Where I can say whatever I want. But I will tell you this. If Google emailed me right now and said, you must submit proof of vaccination and your ID or you will be barred from using this platform ever again, I would be off YouTube like that. If a Google rep called me and said, submit your proof of vaccination or you will be banned, I would say then ban me because that's none of your business. I would sing all of this and I would gladly go live down by the river in a van. But the reality is this, my friends, TimCast.com is a much bigger portion of, of, of my business than YouTube ever was. And I wish I'd started it sooner. And I cut half my content off. You remember, I used to do six, I used to do five segments on this channel down to two because I don't want to keep producing on on YouTube. I want to put stuff up on TimCast.com and build a platform where we're safe to to speak out and speak about the ideas we want and create a space for others to do so as well and to do legit journalism. And we got two nonprofits in the works. Paperwork's already filed. We are working hard behind the scenes because I'm not going to sit back and let this stuff sink. But I'll tell you this, I would give up every red penny if they came down and tried to force me to do this stuff would never happen. To be honest, with TimCast.com, I don't care. You know, they could take away YouTube and I would just focus on the website. And no matter what happens, I think I'll be fine. And if they took my bank away, if the, if the domain registrar suspended me and if the servers shut me down and everything I had, every presence I had was ripped from me, you know what I would do? I'd go skate. I'd go to a park, I'd sit back, I'd read a book, and I'd be like, you know, I, 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 I did what I could. Probably, uh, uh, you know, just do some organizing and some consulting to help other people with the knowledge that I know and help them succeed. But for the most part, I'm not going to cry about it. I would accept it. I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. Nicki Minaj is clearly willing to do the same thing. How many people were unwilling to speak out? Nicki Minaj is putting her career, her name, her fame all on the line to say, F you, I won't do what you tell me. F you, I won't do what you tell me. Remember that line from Rage on behalf of the machine whose new line is, F you, you better do what they tell you. Talk about losers. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.